If you're a content creator, someone who works with photos, videos, really any media on a regular basis, then you're probably familiar with this. And if you're someone who's serious about that content, then you'll likely also be familiar with this. Hard drives are an essential part of basically any digital workflow, and having a hard drive that's fast enough to keep up with the work you do is an important consideration. Look, these drives are great. I mean, they're basically the go-to for pretty much everyone at this point, but what if I told you that you could get even faster performance for cheaper. This is a custom built external SSD that utilizes an M.2 NVMe drive. These things are typically used inside of computers, whether it's a laptop or an SSD, but with a simple enclosure, you can turn these into an extremely fast, portable, and reliable external SSD. It's easy to assemble, offers a ton of flexibility when it comes to picking your desired storage capacity as well as speeds, and best of all, it's actually cheaper than some of the industry competitors. The most popular drives being ones like this Samsung T7 or even T5 or even the SanDisk Extremes. I mean, these are fast, they're reliable. I've personally been using these for years without a single issue ever, but I think you guys will be honestly really shocked at the performance and speed we can get out of this custom SSD. So let's break down how to build your own. The first thing we need is, of course, the enclosure. There's a ton of options on the market, but I've narrowed it down to what I think are two really, really solid picks. The first one being this really simple and affordable USB-C 3.2 enclosure from Sabrent. This one's great because it has this really clean and sleek toolless design. It doesn't utilize any specific drivers for connectivity, and so it basically makes it fully plug and play. Next, we have this USB 4.0 enclosure from Acasis. This thing is really, really Really impressive because it's both USB as well as Thunderbolt 3, so you can get up to that full 40 gigabits per second bandwidth connection. This one also has a really simple and clean toolless design, so it makes installing your SSD into this super quick. It's a larger overall form factor than the Sabrent enclosure or, of course, you know, something like the Samsung SSDs, but this is actually a good thing because it lends itself to being better at dissipating heat due to its larger aluminum housing. You'd be really surprised at how hot these little NVMe drives get. Next, of course, we need a drive to go inside of this enclosure. There's a really huge amount of options on the market, various speeds and performance, capacity all the way up to eight terabytes, which is pretty insane. On the more affordable side, we have the standard PCIe Gen 3.0 drives. These have been on the market for quite a while now. Really, really impressive speeds and performance. I'll link a few of my favorite ones down below. If we want even more performance, we can go with PCIe 4.0. These things on their own absolutely destroy the performance of any consumer off-the-shelf SSD like the Samsungs or the SanDisk. Granted, we won't truly be able to take advantage of that PCIe 4.0 capability because Thunderbolt 3 is basically the maximum connection that we can get out of these enclosures, but things like the increased SLC cache will allow us to do huge file transfers without the drive slowing down. One thing to note is that if you do decide to go with the cheaper and simpler USB-C 3.2 enclosure, you definitely won't be getting the maximum out of even a PCIe Gen 3 SSD, so don't feel the need to go buy a super high-end SSD if you're not going to be going with the Thunderbolt 3 enclosure. The drive I opted for is the really widely renowned Sabrent Rocket. This is a super fast PCIe Gen 4 drive and I got it in a four terabyte capacity. All right, first let's go ahead and install the drive inside of this Sabrent enclosure. Super simple. All we have to do is pop the enclosure open with this small little button here on the side. It comes with this thermal adhesive pad. It's basically just a little double stick pad that helps conduct heat from the hard drive itself to the actual enclosure. Pop the little SSD into the slot, push it down, and then rotate this little latch, lock it into place, close it right back up, and we're done. Now all we would need to do is plug this into your computer, format it for whatever system you're using, and you're good to go. But I'm actually going to be using the drive inside of the USB 4.0 enclosure from Acasis. First, we can go ahead and open up the enclosure. This is really simple. You just sort of push down on the side here, and the bottom half comes right out. And then it's the same as the other enclosure. All we have to do is pop the little SSD inside of the slot. Then we can take this tiny little rubber stopper 
place it on the little hard drive mounting hole and then push it into place. Same thing, we're good to go. So overall, kind of comparing the size and the form factor, they're pretty similar for the most part. I think for most people, this size difference isn't gonna make a significant difference, but how do they actually perform? What's the speeds and performance like? Before we get into that though, I wanna really quickly tell you guys about the sponsor of this video, Motion Array. It's effectively a one-stop shop for all of your video post-production needs. They have a massive library of beautifully designed templates, whether it's titles, motion graphics, stock assets like overlays, they have stock footage, photos, even a music library. Their presets and templates work inside of Premiere, Final Cut, After Effects, and even DaVinci Resolve. This is an amazing library of assets that you can download and easily and simply use in your projects to make your footage and make your content stand out. What's really great is that it's a single license that covers everything, so you can use it in personal projects, YouTube, commercial, client work, whatever, it's all covered. Pricing is extremely straightforward with a simple $29.99 a month fee for unlimited downloads, or if you wanna save a little bit of money, you can do an annual plan, which is $250 a year. This is a massively valuable asset to video editors if you're looking for a simple and straightforward way to just add a little bit more production value to any of your projects. So if you guys are interested in trying it out, be sure to click the link down below and you can start a free trial. Thank you Motion Array for sponsoring this video. So I think what we're going to do for these benchmarks is go ahead and start with the Samsung T5, kind of like the go-to again for most people. We're going to start inside of Blackmagic Disk Speed Test. Go ahead and click start. A Little over 400 megabytes per second on the right. And for read, just under 400. Pretty fast, it's perfectly adequate for I think most types of work. Overall, this is just a really solid performer and good option. Next, I wanna try this SanDisk Extreme. It is a slightly more expensive drive and right away we're getting about 800 megabytes per second on the right and 725 on the read. This is nearly double the performance of the Samsung T5. Next, we're gonna go ahead and try the Sabrent rocket inside of this Sabrent USB 3.2 enclosure. And we're getting 916 megabytes per second on the right and almost symmetrical, 910 on the read. So now what we're going to do is go ahead and take that drive out of the Sabre enclosure and put it inside of the Acasis USB 4.0 enclosure. Wow, almost 2,400 megabytes per second on the right and pretty close to almost 2,800 megabytes per second on the read. That's faster than the SSDs that used to be inside of the MacBooks, like not even that long ago. For an external drive, which granted this configuration is a little bit more expensive than these, I mean, this is as fast, if not faster than any consumer SSD on the market. And what's so awesome about this drive is that it's backwards compatible with USB. So you don't have to worry about needing a Thunderbolt connection in order to use this drive. Now, real talk here for a sec. Like, are you really going to see a real world performance benefit out of using something like this that reads and writes over two gigabytes per second? The answer is kinda. Like, there's some cases where you'll see a little bit of a benefit. Like, if you have all of your media, your footage on it, and you're bringing it inside of your editor, you'll probably see that that footage loads quicker. The real benefit here is that it's incredibly flexible and versatile. Like, you buy one enclosure, and over time, if you need more storage capacity, you can just go buy another one of those drives. You're certainly paying a premium for these housings on top of the actual storage inside of it itself. Not only that, but oftentimes the warranty on NVMe drives like this is longer than something from Samsung. Overall, I think if you're a content creator and you're looking for a hard drive that you can use as your primary editing drive, whether it's for photos, whether it's for video, these are something to definitely consider, especially if you go the route of the simpler and cheaper enclosure from Sabrent and, you know, something like one of the Gen 3 drives, you can easily get a cheaper setup than buying stuff like this. Hopefully some of that was insightful. This was kind of a nerdy video, a little bit different from some of the stuff that I normally do. But of course, if this is something you guys enjoyed, be sure to give the video a thumbs up. Leave a comment down below if you have any questions or you wanna see more stuff like this. Subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you in the next video.